Good morning. I'm the coach. Welcome to Ray Ron Youth Ministry. But the message today is going to sound more like a message for adults, more of those than youth, but it's going to tie in with both. I want you to, before I start, I want you to think about how you react to people when they say things that offend you. I want you to think about how many close friends you may have lost. Are you on the verge of losing because uh, you've been offended? And there's a, you know, there's a uh, tendency for people, young people do it, probably a little more than older people. There's a tendency for young people to all of a sudden call their so-called friends fake. A lot of times they call their friends fake because they're some, something about their friend, somehow their friend offended them and they don't have the courage to say, man, you know, you offend me. Let's talk about this. Let's work this out. But they'll become more and more offended and not really talk about and make the situation. But my title here is pretty, pretty simple. Okay? Admit you've been offended. Yeah, if you've been offended, you have to admit you've been offended. And you have to deal with the offense right then or it, will, or it will grow into something even worse. I believe some of the easiest people to offend, I'm going to go up the line and come out. I think some of the easiest people to offend are people who have some kind of authority. People who have some kind of authority. I'm talking about anyone from any, any, any um, professional level. Uh, anyone. I think uh, doctors per se, maybe lawyers, uh, got to put pastors up, preachers up there, preachers, teachers, principals, coaches, parents. Uh, very easy to offend. Because sometimes we believe that we have such a sense of entitlement. Everybody is entitled to be perfect around us. Everyone is entitled to not make a mistake. And oftentimes, we, what happens when we do is, uh, what you, young people do and what adults do as well is, we place the expectation of people too high. And when people don't meet our expectations, we're ready to throw them to the side. Okay? Uh, we feel like this individual said something, may have said something, may have did something to offend you and you figure, well, they should know better. They should know me by now. Oh, that's not something they should do. And sometimes we put the, we, we, even with friends and family members, we expect too much out of them. And we set, up, we set this bar. And when they don't meet our expectations, we're ready to call them fake. Are you right now, do you want the video? Have you been offended by someone? Someone said something or done something that offends you? And you haven't went and addressed it. But what's happening, you allow it to build, to build, to build, to build, to build, to build. Well, we're going to talk about that, right? Because if you allow this thing to build and you don't go, and you wait too long to go and, uh, and address it, then it'll turn into something really messy. Now, I'm going to start by uh, looking at a few things here. We're going to look at a word here. We're going to look at the word offend. Offend. Offend is the act of offending or displeasing someone. To offend someone means to irritate someone, to annoy someone, to anger someone, to hurt someone or cause pain. Offenses is the action. The act is the act is the offense, and offend is what the effect. Now, I want you to think about as I'm going along about maybe God is speaking to you as a young a youth. Maybe there's someone in your life that you just need to give a chance. That may have offended you a long time ago or just recently. You just need to give them a chance 
And maybe, because maybe your expectation of that person was just too high. And maybe you're more to blame than the individual that uh, offended you. Now, we're, um, we're going to look at something. We're going to go to uh, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 7. I won't, I won't intend to be very long. Now, I'm going to give you some background on this. David is the, I mean, the background of this. Saul is the king. Jonathan is Saul's son. And David is a great, a great friend of the family. David was one that was very, very loyal to both Saul and to Jonathan. Now, jealousy, jealousy, jealousy can be one key element that causes people to become offended. Now, we're going to read this. In 1 Samuel 18 and 17, not a while, not long ago, Saul, David, and Jonathan had all returned from battle. And they were in this setting. And in this setting, there were dancers, called damsel or dancers. And as these women were dancing, in verse 18, verse 7, they made a state, they, 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 they made this statement. As they were dancing, they sang, they sang this, right? Check this out. Saul has slain thousands. David has slain ten thousands. Now, what the enemy are doing is attempting to sow jealousy in the heart of Saul against his good friend David. And Saul doesn't catch this. And later you find that Saul did not deal with the, with the issue of jealousy, and it cost him. So now, something was said. They said, what they were saying basically was that David had better results in the battle than Saul. Now Saul being the king, should have been confident who he was and knew who he was, but Saul had a sense of insecurity in him. Sometimes what I find out in, in learning and learning in ministry, I found out that sometimes pastors, elders, and people in those positions, uh, youth leaders, uh, and other people in position are, are some of the worst people when it comes to forgiving. They're some of the easiest people to be offended. Now Saul, bear in mind, Saul is the king. And Saul is going to be buried in the trap by the enemy as he's going to become jealous of David. So, so now what happened here is the, the dancers say, oh wow, you know Saul, David has killed more enemy than you have. And so what's Saul's reaction? How does Saul react to it? How does he react to it? And 1 Samuel 18, 18, 1 Samuel 18, 18 say, and Saul was worse. And, and the same displeased him. Saul became unrattled of the thought of someone believing that David was more prominent than he was. And he said, 1 Samuel verse 18, 18, and Saul was worse. And the saying displeased him, and he saw they were ascribed to David 10,000, and to him thousands. And he said this, and Saul said, why can't he have more than the kingdom? Now, the enemy began to penetrate this jealousy into the heart of Saul. And Saul very easy, see like Saul just submits to it very easily. So here are the results. The seeds are being sown in Saul. Saul becomes offended with David because of what the dancers said. Now, 1 Samuel 18 and 19 tells the whole story. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 19 said, And saw I David from that time forward. Now, 1 Samuel 18 and 19, saw I David from that time forward. Meaning, from that time forward, that seed would grow and grow and grow. That seed of jealousy, or you can call it envy, or you can call it offense, was now becoming a part of Saul. And Saul would eventually, at one point, a man, David, who was by his side, one that was very close to Saul the king, 
that was close to Jonathan the son, not all of a sudden saw jealousy of David would cause him to be offended. Now, let's look at this. Again, I want you to think about your own life, but that's, what, that's what's important for all of us to do. Let's think about our life. Where are we at in our life at this time? Are we offended by someone? Are, do, are we holding a fence? We need to admit to God that we are holding a fence and ask God to help us, give us the step we need in order to, order to free ourselves from, from, from it. Now, here's something, here's something I want you to take into consideration. Why may become offended by what is said? By something that's said, may, you may become offended by something that's said. You may become offended not by the fact that it was said, but you may become offended by how it was said. You may say, you know what, I wouldn't have been offended if it was said in a different way. So that may cause the one to become offended. One may become offended One may become offended by the action that was taken against them. One may become offended by actions that were taken against them. Or one may become offended by how the actions were carried out. See, different. How the actions were carried out. If one did not carry the actions in that way against you, you may have not been offended. Okay. Now, I remember when I was a, in a, a soldier in basic training, Back in the back in the seventies, uh, uh, the old son would come through, and they would inspect us, right? And uh, if they didn't like the way something was, they just took it and they threw it, threw it, throw it around, and throw your boots down here, whatever you know. He throw it back and forth, right? And one might have thought that you know what, all he had to do was just tell me that my about this and I'll fix it. He didn't have to throw my boots here or my boots there, right? So that's the idea. Of, one may be offended by where the, the way the action was taken, not necessarily that action had to be taken. One might become offended just by what someone said about them. Now, even more, even more interesting, one may become offended by what someone told them that someone said about them. You may become offended by what someone told you about someone, but you weren't there to hear that, and you're just going to automatically take a face value that that person said that about you, but now you become offended, now you, you, you act different toward them, you didn't, go in, you, didn't, you didn't go to that person, you didn't try to uh, investigate what was actually said, but you become offended just by what you heard. Either way, it's, it's just the enemy's way of separating. It's the enemy way of, of breaking up relationships by, by offenses. Okay, one may become offended. Have you ever become offended by this? You ever had a friend, I even a co-worker, I maybe even a preacher, a pastor, I even a leader, I even a coach of someone, someone promise you something. Coach might promise you you're gonna get more playing time in the next game. Okay, I might have been guilty of this once or twice, but I use like I, I keep good notes and I use get my guys in. Cause I have three teams, but. Uh, but every now and then I may slip up, I may slip up in this area as well. But one may become offended by a promise made to him. A husband may become offended by a promise that a wife made to him. A wife may become offended by a promise that a husband made to him. A, a member of a congregation may become offended by uh, a, a promise that the pastor made to them. It could be something similar, similar to the pastor, I'm going to come to the hospital to see you on Wednesday and the pastor never makes it down there. And that, that, that may be the issue that caused that individual to be offended, right? So there are many ways that people become offended. But the thing is that we have to learn how to get past the offense. We have to learn to take steps to get past the offense. We have to understand that people are not perfect. Maybe we set the bar too high for people. And sometimes, here's, here's something, here's fake. This is fake. Fake is when you set a bar so high for another person, a friend, and you yourself can't, you yourself can't attain that bar. That's fake. Now, it is important that we recognize when we've been offended. It's very important that we recognize when we've been offended. See, offense, being offended caused a lot of good, strong, what were good, strong relationships to, to just shatter. Like glass being broken, it just shatters. But we have to learn 
how to deal with offenses. We got to learn how to uh, to approach people in, 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 a, in a loving way in order to uh, do what we can to, to mend the relationship. It is important that we recognize when we've been offended, and not you know this is something that really only rattle my skin, right? Uh, I had pastor tell me this a few times, several guys. Oh, you know, nothing, nothing bothers me. Nothing bothers me. I just go on with my life. Whatever people say, nothing bothers me. And you know what? That's a lie. I have seen people in leadership position in church, leaders, after being offended by people, take actions, little actions, that they don't think we're little actions, and they treat people, little things, do little things, little spiteful things to people because they were offended, but in your front of you, they'll tell you they weren't offended. The action that people take sometimes is what gives them away. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you a coach or whether you are a pastor or whatever. All of us have flesh and there's nothing perfect about the flesh. And when the flesh is pinched the wrong way, it gets angry. So when we get become offended by something, we need to admit to God, God, I, I'm offended by this. I know I have I need to forgive. But God, I can't do this on my own. I need you to help me. Take me to some steps to help me. And we need to take steps in love to resolve to resolve it. Now, here's the thing. Wounds don't heal very quickly. Wounds take time to heal. So, if someone did something in a relationship to, call, to offend you, it may take some time to completely heal. You know, someone might offend you today, depending on the, the level of the offense, you may not go to lunch with them tomorrow. And I, and I think, to be honest about it, I think some kind of offense that, that happened in people's lives I think it's, it's very it's very ignorant to expect that tomorrow you're going to be having lunch with this guy. All right? Depending on the level of it. What I means to take steps to resolve the wounds caused. And I think I really believe that a lot of Christian people, I'm talking about from the pre pastor on down, you know, I don't have this thing about, you know, I don't put the pastor on the pedestal or nobody on the pedestal or nobody here. But from the preacher on down, one thing you have to do is... Stop trying to make people think that we're invincible. Oftentimes, people, leaders, leaders, it doesn't matter what aspect of leadership you do, uh, the leader wants to, I was, when I was, when I, mean, I was a platoon sergeant, squad leader, infantry squad leader, infantry platoon sergeant, and uh, one of the big things was that leaders wanted the truth to think that they were invincible. Nothing bothered them. No. When a leader would, when a leader was deploying to a foreign country, just like his troops, right? He had the same issues. He's human. He missed his family. Okay. After after going on after road marching ten miles, his leg is hurting like everybody else. But there was people at lead sometimes in leadership position to all aspect of leadership put up this smoke screen that you know what nothing bothers me, and that's a lie. Everybody, at some point, has something that rattles them. Now, it's important to understand that wounds don't heal, always heal quickly. Sometimes it takes time, but you have to take steps. If you don't take steps to deal with the offense that, that, that are affecting you, it, here's what will happen. Eventually, it'll grow. It'll grow into strife. Okay? It'll grow into strife. Then it'll grow into discord. Discord. You, you find yourself, because you're offended by this person, you'll find yourself trying to cause other people to dislike that person because of what you say that person did to you. Okay, now, don't just ignore your negative thoughts and actions toward that person. Okay? You can go from anger to hate. Now, let's continue on. We don't have very much left. Proverbs 18 and 19 says, a brother, a brother, a brother, now, in this, tank, in this uh, content, brother is going to cover everybody. But say a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. There's a lot of offense in the church. There's a lot of offense, offended people in the business world. There's a lot of offended people in the sporting world. There's a lot of offended people 
in in industry. There's a lot of offended people running around. And a brother offended is hard to win than a strong city and contentions are like the ball of a castle. In other words, once a brother or sister been offended, depending on the, the defense, it's going to take time for the wound to heal. It takes time for the wound to heal. I had a friend named Randy when I was, I was younger in our high school days, and me and we were good to my closest friend, Randy. He was very competitive, just like I was, we were very competitive. We were very close friends. But when we, when we got out to competing against each other, right, it was like a war. We got, we got out to competing, and whether it was football or basketball, we were always, we were always ended up on a different team. So I was physical, he was physical, and then we'd go out in the game sometime, and, and you know, and sometimes after the game was over, he'd go his way, I'd go my way, and uh, a day would go by, after the day would go by, I used to go by his house, and he'd go by my house, you know. We, we got over the, we got over the, uh, the, you know, the competition thing, right? And we got back together, you know, and you know, you know, as friends do. But competition seemed to, didn't bring out the best of us. Competition seemed to bring, bring out the, the worst in us. So we had to learn how to balance that out. We had to learn that, you know, that once the game was over, you know, once the game was over, we could still come back and be friends. And sometimes we offend each other in, in, in the heat of battle of competition, you know, we might offend each other, might say things to each other, you know, but then, you know, we, we come back and apologize. And so, when you've been offended, you have to acknowledge the fact that you've been offended and you've got to take steps, necessary steps, okay, to, now I know people, you know, they'll go through the script and it's okay, God, the word of God says forgive, and that's true, okay, and some people say forgiveness is an act of faith, okay, well, some say forgiveness is confession, well, it can be both, confession and act of faith, but even after, you, after the confession, you have to do some work, okay, there's some things you have to do, you have to continue to pray about it, and God will give you wisdom on how to, what kind of action that you need to take in order to, order to heal from the wound of being offended. There's no, there's no, there's no automatic form, one day formula to, to being offended. Wounds take time to heal. Saint Matthew, here's, here's a good one. Saint Matthew 24, 10, probably B, and say, and many will be offended, and will betray one another and hate one another. Now. Here's a very interesting thing. A very interesting thing, people say. How can two people have been so close together now become so far apart? They become now they become so far apart. Not only have they become far apart, but the offended person now goes into betraying the individual who, who had offended him, and then starts to hate that person. Now, what am I saying? If you've been offended and you don't deal with it properly, you go from, you now go from just being uh, offended, you start to betray your brother. How do you betray your brother? By the negative, you say negative things about him to other people, uh, sowing discord about him, telling lies on him, this thing of nature. Now you begin to betray him and then you began to, like Saul with David, you began to hate. And everyone knows hate without the devil. So, if you don't deal with offenses right in a timely manner, you will become a person who sows discord against your brethren. You become a person who hate people, hate your brethren. And now, here's something more damaging than that. Something more damaging in becoming offended is you begin to bring innocent people into your situation. So you can be offended by, you can be a woman and be offended by a male, a male, and all of a sudden, you want to judge every male based on that same offense that that person did to you, which is wrong. Vice versa, you can be a male and do the same thing. You could have been offended by a, 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 a young lady or a female, and then because you were offended by that person, now you want to judge every female the same way. Now, here's another very interesting one. This is a very interesting one. I, I ran this a few times. It had to do with race. I had a guy in, in the army. He was a good friend of mine. He was a staff sergeant. And he was a uh, Caucasian guy. And he had married a Korean woman. 
they told me how he hated white women because uh, because white women did him wrong. And I didn't really like what he was saying. I said, you know what? No, that was one person that did you wrong. You're going to say now you hate, you hate a race of people because one person did you wrong. See, offenses cause you to draw in innocent people. You can be a you can be a, a, a African American offended by a, a, a Caucasian, and because of that, you become offended by every Caucasian, or vice versa. You can be now I'm going to get into deep. You can be an African American woman. You've been offended by some African American man. You decide you know I've been offended by these African American man. I'm an African American woman. I don't want nothing to do with African American man. I don't want anything to do with them anymore. They're all the same. No, you've been offended by this person, but now you're judging everyone the same way, and vice versa. Guys do it, guys do it the same thing too, you know. Oh, I've been offended by this African American woman, so you know what? All African American women are no good, so I'm gonna get me a white woman. Well, you can get who you want to get, but don't do anything based on the fact that you've been offended. Okay? When you become offended, what happens is you when you become offended, if you don't deal with the offense, you also forfeit some good relationships. Because you begin to look at people, you begin to look at innocent people in a negative way. People that have nothing to do with your offense, you begin to judge people based on the offense that was done to you. That's what we have to learn how to forgive. We have to learn how to forgive. And, and first of all, like anything else, to, to anything else, we have to admit where we're at. We have to admit where we're at. When we forgive and let something go and we start a healing process, then we can move forward with our life. But until we let go the offense, until we let go the offense and stop holding it, we're not free. You may think you're free, but until you truly forgive, until you truly take the steps that are necessary, okay, to get you on the road where you're being healed from the wound suffered by the offense, then you like a prisoner and you're not free. You're not free. Don't lie to yourself that you're free. Somebody here is going to listen to this video today going to realize they need to mend, get some things mended. They need to let some offense go. They need, to, they need to free themselves by letting the offense go. And may God touch your heart. I mean, hopefully this video has been a blessing to you. God bless you.